Welcome to lesson 3a, choked flow in a converging nozzle. I'm going to start this lesson with a step-by-step -step example problem, namely a converging nozzle flow, and we'll discuss both unchoked and choked flows. In fact, we'll define choked flow, and then we'll see what happens when the back pressure, PB, is lowered further than what's required to choke this nozzle flow. Consider air flowing steadily from a large pressurized tank through a converging duct. And this duct is open to a big room or another large tank where the back pressure is set. The duct is insulated and we're ignoring friction along these walls. We're given P naught, T naught, and the back pressure and also the exit area, which is here and we'll call AE. We'll do these four parts, but first let's list our assumptions and approximations. The air is approximated as an ideal gas We'll approximate the flow as adiabatic, since it's well insulated. Since we're ignoring friction and other irreversibilities, we approximate this flow as isentropic. We also make the one-dimensional approximation, namely at any cross-section of the flow, we use capital V as the average speed, and thinking of that V as constant through the duct at this location. And finally, we assume that the flow is steady. In other words, this pressurized tank is continuously pumped to this pressure, and we keep the temperature the same. And we do the same with back pressure. We keep this as a constant. Part A is the flow at the exit subsonic, sonic, or supersonic. Well, we've learned from previous lessons that it cannot be supersonic, since this is not a converging, diverging nozzle. It's simply a converging nozzle. There is a minimum area, but we don't go up to a larger area after that, which is the only way the flow can become supersonic in a duct. We have to analyze the pressure values to determine if the flow is sonic or subsonic at the exit plane. Here's our equation for the critical property P star, remembering that critical also means sonic. So if the flow were sonic at the throat or at the exit, P star over P naught, would be given by this expression. And we can state that if the actual back pressure PB is less than or equal to P star, then the flow is sonic at the exit. Well here for air, gamma is 1.40, which when plugged into this expression gives us P star over P naught is equal to 0.5283 to four digits. So the sonic or critical back pressure would be 0.5283 times our given P naught, which is 158 kPa, which turns out to be 83.47 kPa. But our back pressure PB is 101.3 kPa, standard atmospheric pressure. And comparing these two, our PB is not less than P star. Therefore, this flow is subsonic at the exit plane. In fact, this flow is subsonic everywhere. Part B is to calculate the exit Mach number and the exit temperature. First thing we recognize is that since the flow is subsonic, PE must equal PB. I make a note here, exit pressure PE is not always equal to PB, as we'll discuss later. But here, since the flow is subsonic, the exit pressure and the back pressure are the same. Now let's use our isentropic relationships Namely, for pressure, the ratio P naught over P is 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 m squared to the gamma over gamma minus 1 exponent. At the exit plane, we set P equal PE equal PB. Therefore, P naught over PB is 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 me, the exit plane Mach number, squared to gamma over gamma minus 1. We know gamma, of course, and we know P naught and PB, so we can solve this for ME. I won't show all the algebra, but you can easily find that ME is 0 0.82286, and to three digits I'll report it as 0 0.823 as my answer. To get temperature, I'll use ratios as follows. We have an expression for TE over T naught, so I set T equal to TE over T naught times T naught. Well, TE over T naught is 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 ME squared raised to the negative 1 power. And then we put our T naught 
Well, we know ME, and I'll use all these digits or keep it on your calculator storage. So we can plug that in here. And we're also given T0, namely T0 is 520K. Plugging these in, again, not showing all the numbers, we get TE equal 457.98K, or I will report this as 458K as my final answer. Before we move on to part C, I'll make some comments. First of all, this nozzle is not sonic at the exit plane since ME is less than 1. The back pressure would need to be lower than what was given to generate sonic flow at the exit plane. Sir, I calculated that the exit temperature is 62 degrees colder than that in the stagnation tank. Why is it so cold? Great observation, Mr. Calvin. You're correct. My third comment is to notice how cold the exit flow is. T0 is 520K in the tank, which is pretty hot, but the exit temperature is 458K, a difference of 62K, or since Kelvin is just a shifted centigrade scale, also 62 degrees C, and the temperature at the exit is lower. Why is this the case? Well, we can see from our temperature equation for isentropic flow that for any M greater than zero, this term is positive, making T naught bigger than T. The larger M is, the bigger the ratio, meaning T gets smaller for a given T naught. And M increases from zero in the tank to ME, so temperature continuously drops throughout the duct. Finally, we used critical property P star in our analysis, even though it doesn't occur anywhere in the flow. That sounds similar to the previous lesson when we were talking about stagnation properties that you could still use even if they weren't there. Right, Arlo. P star and the other critical properties are just properties, and we can use them in our analysis even if they don't actually occur anywhere in the flow. Thanks, Doc. Part C asks us, at what back pressure PB does the nozzle become sonic? Well, we've really already answered this question. Namely, PB is lowered until PB equal P star, the critical value, which we calculated above as 83.47 kPa. Keeping with three significant digits, I would give my answer as 83.5 kPa. Part D is an interesting question. Namely, what happens if PB is lowered even further? In other words, PB less than P star. The answer is that the flow is still sonic at the exit plane. It can't go supersonic because we don't have a converging diverging duct. We have only here a converging duct. For our duct, let's sketch pressure P versus X, where we'll define X as starting at the entrance to the duct. And we'll do this non-dimensionally. So we'll actually plot P over P naught, and our scale will be 0 to 1 and the x-axis goes from x equals 0 to x at the exit plane. Let the first case be the trivial case, where PB equal P0. In other words, there would be no flow, since there's nothing to drive the flow. By the way, let me label P0 and back pressure PB. So this would just be a horizontal line. We'll call this case A. I'm going to assume that this entrance is so large that P at x equals 0 is equal to P0. So case B is where P0 is greater than PB, but PB is greater than P star. The pressure ratio will look something like this. This is subsonic everywhere, as in our example problem, since the back pressure is not small enough to make the flow sonic at the throat. Recall that for air, P star over P0 is 0 0.5283. So consider next case C, where PB equal P star. This is the case discussed in part C above, where the flow is sonic at the exit plane, and the pressure drop would look something like this, PB reaching P star as the flow goes through the nozzle to the exit plane. What about a case, which we'll call D, where PB is less than P star? You might expect it may be something like this, but that's impossible since this portion would be going supersonic when the pressure is less than P star, so this cannot be correct. 
Instead, we'll follow the exact same curve we had for case C. As we continue to drop, let case E be the case where PB is zero, a perfect vacuum. Well, even then, we'll follow the same path as C. And for all these cases above this line, PB is equal to PE. As we always said for subsonic flow, or incompressible flow, in our first fluids class. But in this portion of the flow, PB is not equal to PE. In fact, PB is less than PE, since for all these cases, PE equal P star, right at the exit plane. For any back pressure less than P star, such as cases D and E, the flow through the nozzle doesn't change at all compared to case C. The terminology is that the flow is choked, meaning it's fixed or stuck when PB is less than or equal to P star. And ME, the exit Mach number, is 1, in other words, sonic or critical at the exit plane for any condition like this, namely C, D, and E in our sketch. Even when it's a total vacuum, nothing changes in the duct. In fact, I'll say that nothing changes inside the nozzle if you lower PB less than P star. What does this mean physically? Well, once we have this condition where PB is less than P star, the Mach number is 1 at the exit plane. V at the exit plane is equal to A at the exit plane, the speed of sound. We know that sound travels at, well, the speed of sound. And so if we make some kind of noise here, we have a sound source. The sound cannot penetrate upstream, although it can go downstream. If you had a microphone sitting here and you start making some sound, you would not hear it. By the way, a sound source is really pressure fluctuations. So I'll say that we can make noise or pressure fluctuations downstream of the nozzle, but the disturbance cannot travel back, meaning to the left, into the nozzle. This is another reason why we call this choked flow. In other words, nothing we do downstream will change the flow in the duct as long as PB remains less than or equal to the critical value P star, and we have sonic flow at the exit plane. How can we change the flow? We would have to change the upstream stagnation pressure in order to change P star and therefore change the sonic conditions here. In an upcoming lesson, we'll talk about mass flow rate through this nozzle. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.